Well, what's the crack? How are you getting on? Everybody, you're all very welcome to number 78 of the Ramble Pod. About 200 and something of the overall scheme of things. How's the fucking going, lads? It's, uh, what? Well, as you will hear this, and right now it is the 31st of the 1st, so we're nearly through. Nearly through January, lads. It only took fucking four and a half months to get through January. Delighted with that. How are you getting on? Are you alright? Good stuff. Um, yeah, like I said, just a couple more left after this one, and then they're all entirely, all the Ramble Pods are going completely over onto the Patreon page for the Patreon people. There will still be the interviews. I got one wrapped in today with the mighty Daniel O'Brien. That'll be out Monday morning. So if it's your first time listening, because it just looks like after that TV show, there's a bunch of new people on the Instagram account. So if it's your first time listening, hit subscribe. Hit subscribe. Go back, have a gander through the Bookshot Instagram page. There's a shitload of episodes to be looking at and listening to. Have a gander at them. There's loads of them there. Um, also, thank you very much. Harden Up Podcast Episode 1 with myself and Owen Colgan came out this morning. And a lot of very, very nice complimentary people. And I did, uh, you know, listen back to it actually. It was like, yeah, that flowed very nicely. Very nicely. It, we'll, we'll find our feet. It's a bit of crack now anyway, but we'll find our feet. We're not going to go too bubblegummy, make a magazine fucking show out of it. No, <laughs> tell me what's coming up. Nick. You know, it's not going to be too much of that. It's still going to be sound like two people who actually do live comedy on a regular basis. Because I think the premise of this is going to be definitely to take it live. You know what I mean? Take it live on the on the reg. Um, and just have a bit of crack, maybe guests and stuff like that. Do a couple of sketches. But mostly just, I reckon we could hold our own. You know what I mean? Having the crack in front. I mean, if Blind Boy can sit there and not say four words for a fucking hour as some bloke talks about frogs, you know, we'll be all right. We'll get through it. Thanks very much, gang, to the Patreons contributing away. Your benefits are there for you. Like I said, you'll be getting this early, but it's all going over. It's all moving over there. So if you, Ramble Pods are your thing, if you figure, you know what, I like the Ramble Pods too, go on over. It helps contribute to the show, but it's a little kickback, a little kiss to you, you know. Uh, also, thank you very much to the very, very, very generous people of the podcast world who contributed to my wife's uh, fundraiser that she's doing at the minute for it's on the I Donate page. You know who you are. A couple of you gave unbelievably, unbelievably generous donations. So thank you very much. She's cutting um, just about 12, 12 and a half inches off her hair for uh, the Little Princess Foundation. And the funds then on the side will be raised for, is it St. Luke's? It's, they took care of her mother when she had cancer. So I'll put the link below. If you sling even a dollar at it or a euro at it, I mean, there's settings on it, you know, to do whatever, but it, you know, whatever about Patreons and all the rest of it, these people are unfucking believable to be able to show up and do this job every day, looking at, the, you know, sick people and just being 100% positive. And, and also, she's chopping off a fucking... She never had her hair ever, ever short. So it's going to be cool. Interesting times to see what the crack is. But thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a million. I think that's everything now. Look, if you're new, just hit subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to. Also, there is the other, if I could speak, podcast called Harden Up Podcast with myself and Owen Colgan. If you're a fan of the Hardy Bucks or if you're from outside the country, you haven't a fucking clue what I'm talking about. It's good crack. It's good crack. Go have a look. Again, I'll put the... Because it's brand new. It's weird. Like right now when I put up a podcast through the, through the watch, we call it the, the platform that I put it up. Boom, 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 boom. Went in fucking 15 minutes. It's everywhere. This one, because I've put up to over 200 episodes, it's like, I don't know. It's, it must be, there must be a system where they're going, this is legit. It's not like you're greasing the wheels of a fucking piece of machinery. like. But because it's brand new, Man, it takes forever to come up on all the the other ones. This is the the hard enough podcast, but it'll get there. It'll get get into your your whatever you listen, whether it's Apple or Google Play or any of those. It'll get there eventually. You know, it took like something like nine or ten hours to get across to fucking Apple today. Like, come on, you know. But that's that's how it rolls. That's how it rolls. Um. All usual platforms, follow me on Tom O'Mahony Comedy would find it. Bookshop Podcast is there on, which a lot of people seem to be jumping on um, Instagram. That's why I set up the page. It was more for my own insanity. I had no idea who the fuck I'd had on. And it's good, it's easy for people to scroll back because when you look on the old fucking Apple or any of them, they're like, do you want to see 10 more, do you? Oh, right, did you want to see? Yes, fucking please. That's why my thumb was fucking nearly burning a hole in the, in the phone 
come on, roll the fucking thing back. Oh, right, did you want to see, t- you want to see more? <sighs> All right, so, so, <laughs> you know what I mean? There are bunches more there. That's it, you know, I, get it, it, I, I don't know what else to be saying to you, lads. There is the merch shop and all the rest of it. Thank you very much. A couple of people were at a gig the other night. They had the merch on. Do you know, it's really appreciated. It's, you know, at very, I remember the first time ever it was like, oh, Jesus, right. Um, I don't know why I got shocked. It was me that put it up for sale. But it was just like, oh, fuck, people are actually, oh, right. And, you know, you just take a leaf out of Colin Geddes' book and he's like, so fuck what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people want this stuff, so why would you not make it for them? Um, so, yeah, exactly. There is a merch shop there as well. Look in the show notes down the bottom in the description of this thing. I've been fucking talking shite. I'm off the limbs, lads. plans. You'll be delighted to know the cold is more or less gone. But, of course, herself has the cold now. And the child is spluttering like a cat in the corner. But he's taking it like a man. Taking it like a fucking man. If that's not too thick, that's sort of thing to say. Mm-hmm. But he's taking like a 50 year old man, if you know what I mean. Like I thought the first time a kid would cough, he'd freak out. Because imagine, you've never done anything like that before. And all of a sudden your body goes. <laughs> you think, oh fucking hell. Child is going to start bawling now because it doesn't know what's happening to its face. Its face is trying to turn itself inside out. But he didn't. He just kind of sat there. <laughs> like a 50 year old who was on 30 a day for the last fucking 50 years. Just not about it. So it's funny, like, what comes naturally and then what wears off. Because apparently babies can swim from the get-go. Is that true? I Again, lads, I, we've talked about the antenatal classes. Shrine only zoned in and out of half. Like, if even I did, I zoned in and out of half. Um, apparently they can swim. Like that baby from the fucking Nirvana album years ago. Do you remember that? Like, it's, nobody taught a fucking tiny baby how to swim, did they? It would be an unbelievable baby. They could, you know. Okay, Timmy. I'm gonna do, there's you know they don't they and then we forget it how shit is that like why would you forget how to swim you know you're born legendary can fucking swim like there's no way I could do what he can do when he's sucking on the bottle because they're built to take the tit and it's like this fucking Hoover technique comes up where they kind of curl their tongue and tuck out their bottom lip and there's no way I could do it I've lost all ability now I don't know when I would ever have to be able to suck milk out of a tit <coughs> or maybe a snake bite hey you might need it for a snake bite that's what you do you need a little baby if somebody gets bitten by a snake you need a baby stick them on that for a minute and then shake all oh no Jesus Christ Tom what are you saying <laughs> it's just very interesting stuff I did not know this but it would seem that is not a fucking bother to him coughing sneezing it's all like <laughs> and still you know when you sneeze or whatever Especially if you're by yourself, you're like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I thought that it only started to happen to me when I was older. He does that now. So he's like sneezing as I was changing early. He was like, ah, tch, ah, tch. ah Jesus, Jesus Christ. I swear I could hear him swearing under his breath like, ah, oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Jesus Christ, I'm at Um... Yeah, a lot of cool new listeners this in the last week. I don't know what has spurned it on, but people like contacting people. Maybe you're here listening all the time. You go, fuck it. I'm going to contact this fellow. Loads and loads of compliments. Thanks a million. Uh, compliments or just feet. You know what I mean? What you're getting from it. I absolutely fucking love that stuff. Because th- this is the only way. Like companies o- can only work on, um, what the fuck do they call them? Like markers, you know what I mean? You've got to hit markers to a certain degree. No, I'm still going to fucking do my own thing, but it's nice to know, it, not just for your fucking ego, but nice to know that you're all oh, cool, yeah, yeah, okay, so I'm hitting that grand, I'm hitting that demographic, and it seems to be all ranges of ages and all genders, and all genders, all the million genders that there is right now. So it's cool, keep sending them in, whether it's through the email, through bookshoppodcast at gmail.com, um, or through fucking Instagram or Snapchat or whatever. Send them on. Send me on the screen grabs of you listening to the show. I fucking love that shit. And I throw it back up there because it's like, cool, this is a community. We've made a fucking thing. Um, and thanks very much. I just watched, got finished watching. Um, uh, I'd kind of half forgotten it was on. Because, you know, I hadn't. And then your man turns around screaming for grub, going, I want fucking grub. Uh, fucking grub. So I was like, oh, fucking, I'll feed him. And then I kind of forgot. So I think I missed 
some of me being on. Apparently, I'm on more than once. On the, I, yeah, I need to put context on this. I've just been talking away to people who have probably no idea what I'm talking There was a television program on just now. Um, it was taken from the Vodafone Comedy Festival. I talked about it last week, and it turned out far better than I, I expected. <laughs> I talked about this months ago on the day of when it happened. Um, I was basically, I had to bolt. I went on first. Excuse me. Oh, Jesus, what a rude bastard. I had to, um, I had to bolt, like quite literally went on stage, did my seven minutes and fucking broke for the border. Like the big worry in these things is like, are the acts going to stay under, under the seven, eight minute mark so we can actually have fil- time, fi- you know, filming this correctly because sometimes lads can fucking drag the arse out of a small bit and they go way over because they're like, you know, I need to get all my footage out there. But you're better off just going hard as fuck for the time they told you, you know what I mean? Which I did. I'd say I did 6 minutes, 59 seconds, 0.59, fucking 99 seconds. Um, they did not get much more out of me, I can tell you, because I had to bolt that day. And I, I'd kind of put it out of my mind. And I'd kind of been a bit worried because we did a thing years ago um, in the Sugar Club. It was like a competition thing in 2013. And myself and a couple of more made it to the final. And you're thinking, oh, this is shot amazingly. And I didn't know fuck all much about cameras at the time like, and what they're doing. But I didn't realise that they hadn't mic'd any of the audience. They had taken stock footage from the audience that weren't even there on the night. I was, it just, it's the worst thing in the way of stand-up. But this turned out very well. The show itself was really well produced. It wasn't just all stand-up, 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 stand-up. There was cutbacks and come back to other guys as well, like Paul Marsh was on there, Ryan Cullen was on there, Brian Galad, um, uh, Stephen Ryan was on it a couple of times, Danny... Monday's guest he was hosting it so he was on it a couple of times but they had Andrew Maxwell they had Terry Allerton and they had uh, Joe Caulfield and Carl Spain and they were cutting back and forth to them but then also Sean Walsh was there and they had uh, Anna Clifford and uh, fucking Carl I don't know why I forgot Carl's name for a second Carl was hosting it so they were kind of walking around Gal- and it was very good for Galway it wasn't just about the comedy festival it was about the Mockness festival that comes every year and they're just it was a big promo it was a great show for Galway I have to say so fair play really really well produced in that one it wasn't just sticking with this is stand up stand up stand up which is a difficult thing to do on, especially when you're banging out so many heads there's so many names like there must have been 10 comedians on that like easy in total, there must be ten or twelve, and that's you're asking the you're asking the viewers at home to do a lot. You know what I mean? If you're just going to go vroom, vroom, like five minutes, this, you know, five minutes each, you're asking a lot of people. It it was very well produced, I think. Anyway, um, I am back and go uh, tomorrow night. As you'll hear this, this tonight, as you'll hear this, I'm in Ashbourne Comedy Club. I think it's pretty much sold out. My seven Jim are there doing the double headliner. So Jim Elliot and myself, I think it's pretty much sold out. But fuck it, give it a crack. Why not? I'm some animal drinking tea into the microphone. And do you know what is even wankier? I'm drinking peppermint tea. Why am I drinking peppermint tea? Why? Because I wasn't looking. <laughs> Tom Tom buys the kettle kettle and just sticks his hand into the cupboard cupboard. And out what I thought was the blueberries, which is the decaf. That's where I'm at now. That's caffeinated tea at this hour of night. Once upon a time, I could drink fucking a gallon of it. It wouldn't make any difference to me going to sleep. But it has to be decaf these times. And I'm after getting a bit, and I'm just, you know what? Again, once upon a time, I would have spat it out, fucked it out the window, gone and made another one. Do you think I'd do that? Not a hope. Dirty D, de- I used to be such a fucking snob too with coffee. I don't give a fuck anymore. Because the shit that's in the petrol stations I'm pretty much drinking out of most times. Oh, Lord. I am in Ashbourne Comedy Club. Uh, I think I'm doing a gig on Saturday night somewhere, and I don't fucking know where, lads. It's written here, gig. In my Google Maps. That's some use, isn't it? I hope the fuck somebody gets in contact with me. <laughs> What's fucking wrong with me? Normally I'm on this shit. Tuesday. Coincidentally, ironically, whatever you want to say, after being at, on the telly with the, what you call it, with the Vodafone Comedy Carnival, I am back, back in the motherfucking Roisin Dove, the R to the D. I'm back in g g g g Galway, everybody. Very, very excited about being back in Galway. I have some... Lovely new material for the people of Galway, so I'm very, very excited there. I'm in Dante's Comedy Club on Friday night, Cherry on the 10th, City Limits in Cork, 
on the 15th we'll leave it at that I'm not going any further because my eyes are starting to burn up just even looking at the fucking phone but sure look go to tomomahoney.com for all them tickets all them juicy juicy tickets um, and I'm geared do you know what I'm getting a right itchy feet I know I've told you I've got caveman coming back and everything but I'm getting very itchy feet to fucking take my own show on the road again I say again I have since the last time I was out I've probably got two two shows last time I was out was two years ago yeah I have I easily have two shows Stand up hours I could take out in the road. It's just do I have the fucking time for promotion and all the rest of it? I don't fucking think I do. That's the killer. That's the killer. People will come see it if they know about it, but it's like the time and effort you have to put in when you don't have a huge production budget behind you. The time and effort you have to put in is fucking phenomenal. So if I can work out kind of a plan, um, yeah, I mean, to deal with the greater, like Mickey, um, Colin and say Shane have a nice condensed market up there half a million people nice condensed market in one province it's nice it's good and you're speaking to those people but you got the other three provinces down here that's a lot of fucking people so but you know what I gotta get the finger out on it because I know I'm getting I'm getting itchy gums I'm getting itchy gums so there will be there'll, there'll be something on the road I have like I said I have two shows no problem I could run one after the other I could run the two of them around the country consec- separately I don't know what I'm going to call them but it's uh, yeah it's got to happen it's got to happen even watching that and I was like yeah that came out fucking pretty well like people seem to respond to it you know what I mean and when people are like I got a very, lot of very nice messages in the last hour or so from people I don't know so Thank you very much for those messages, but you're kind of going, mm, yeah, yeah. And even after a month off, like, you know, with the panto and all the rest of it, I was in McCoy's in Nure on Saturday night, and it was fucking lovely. It was just lovely. There was no weird shit happening. Like, the bloke didn't try and come in the door the last, like he had the last time. It was just great. I probably went way over, but I was just trying to make up for time that, you know. And I let it rip, tater chip. And a month off, normally that would be ring rust, you know what I mean? Not a fucking hope. I don't give a shit. It was... I was probably a little bit laboured points and, you know, my uh, my ring dominance wasn't fucking great, you know. To a certain degree, I was just fucking stepping off to the side when I could have thrown a jab. But still, got the fucking job done. Um, Yeah, choked him to submission. So it was great. One woman actually weed herself. Actually show, She actually showed me. It was fucking amazing. This is what happens when you get BYOB. It's a cafe, so they don't have a drinks license. So people can bring whatever fucking boozy booze they want. And this woman actually wet herself from laughing that hard. Which I take as a major fucking pride. I mean, creepy as shit and don't come near me ever again, woman. But at the same time, I made you a grown-ass adult piss yourself before fucking 10 o'clock in the evening. I'm very happy about that. Um, And then we trucked on down myself and... uh, Colin, we, myself and Geddes, we went down the country. He'd never been to Limerick before. And unfortunately, he, you know, he, you do well to get out of the house inside the hour that you were planning on getting when you have a kid. You know what I mean? So in fairness, he, he, he got away about 40 minutes later than he was hoped. So I wanted to get down to Limerick, hit donkey forwards with him. Um, but we just didn't have time. We went straight to the University Concert Hall and it was fucking lovely. It was small because it's, it's you know, it's, um, it's January and all the rest, but they were cracking. They were cracking audience like I fucking knew they would be. We enjoyed the hell out of it. But we'd talk about like major staging. Like like Colin was going, I just did the SSC Arena. And I am, you're a fucking diva. I was like, what? Because I'm in the UCH so often in the University Concert Hall. I just went to, like, I'm high-fiving the lads walking through and they go, Tom, is everything okay? We have tea, coffee, we have everything. I'm like, yeah. Uh, I'll take dressing room one. Colin, which one would you like? And he's kind of going, is, will we not just go? I was like, for fuck's sake. And then we were... <laughs> We're on the centre of the stage and I'm asking about you know that the, the staging because I've, I've been there so many times and it was kind of my design has come up with the way it looks right now it's t- subtle as fuck that the audience won't cop it but things about like the way the lighting are is the curtains and all the rest of it and the lads were kind of going so Tom do you want a like a rug in the centre and this is again something an audience will never notice but you'll see the likes of Tiernan uses it a lot of people stand ups use it when it's a really really broad black stage it's a focal point for people to look. And I went, you know what, guys? I will take a rug. And have you got two of them? And they go, we do, actually. So they tape them together and put down rug. And get us looking at me like, why would you? I said, trust me. Trust me. When you're just... These rugs are lovely and spongy. When you're just walking back and forth on them, it'll just... 
it just brightens your experience and it gives people something to look at and breaks up that big ass stage and you can see him fucking loving it he's totally going to fucking ask for rugs next SSC arena or any of these fucking big halls he does from now on so that was glorious that was a lovely fucking gig um and then I just had bits and bobs, acty jobs around the country and stuff like that throughout the week. But I was, I made a fucking note, a couple of notes of these animals. I'm not going to, I'm not going to stay along with you guys. I know I've just kind of just promoted a bunch of shit really like, and, but I had to get a fucking ramble pot out to you. I had to, I had to. They, they, you got to harden up episode, um, Aoife Dooley episode, obviously out this week. I did a podcast with Darren Matthews actually, yeah. I'm not sure what he puts it up on. But if you look for Darren Matthews comedy, I'm sure there's a pod. Yeah, there's a po- I did a pod- podcast with him on on his podcast on Saturday night, be- just before we kicked off the show. So we've been podcasting heavy, guy, and it's um yeah, I'm squaring my ass away properly this year. Now we're going to, like I said, they're going over to the Patreon, and then there'll be plenty of guests. And then we have uh, the other- Jesus Christ! I keep mic oh, hitting the fucking mic. What's wrong with me? I had some. I actually made some notes. Right, so. McCoy's in UCH, yes. Coronavirus, no. We don't want that. Hey, lads, ground the fucking couple of planes, will you? Huh? Ground a couple of fucking planes. Nobody's going to fucking piss their pants. And who the fuck is going anywhere? Like, if you have that thing, apparently you know you have it. What the fuck are you doing? What is the compulsion to get on a fucking plane, you can't? Just have the fucking manners to stay at home and fucking die. Don't fucking go give it to somebody else. Apparently somebody has it here in fucking Dublin. Apparently somebody has it in the hospital. I swear to fuck, I'd go in and beat you to death myself, heavily masked. What the fuck are you doing? Oh lord! But I, look, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But it, it's all the fucking signs of every one of them fucking movies, lads. The pathogens and fucking outbreaks, and they always start with some fucker eating a gun off fucking duck's uterus or some fucking thing. I lads. Look, I'm just fucking telling you. When you're only half cooking food and you're eating weird old shite, I'm all for fucking testing the boundaries of food, lads. But what are you doing? What are you doing fucking making up an old virus and calling it a shite old beer? You know? Call it fucking something decent if you're going to call it anything. But, yeah. I don't know. I'm guessing, listen, when something threatens it this big, they'll find a cure inside a week. Magically. Magic. This stuff would be like AIDS, but they'll magic... I'm, cancer but they'll find a fucking cure for this I guarantee you guarantee you because you see it's no good to anybody the pharmaceutical companies if it's actually killing people on the spot you want to make people sick you don't want to fucking kill them because you can't make money out of killing them so they're going to try and stomp this one out Um, poor old Kobe Bryant and the daughter huh Jesus that was rough that's rough isn't it she's only a young one he's only young for himself really 41 done so much then I suppose he did so much you know, a lot of people are still scratching themselves in the mid forties. Going, I've done fucking nothing. You know, you hear the phrase like, "If I died tomorrow, I'd be happy." Of course, you wouldn't. That's a ridiculous fucking phrase. But that man did do a lot. His little daughter didn't get to do fuck all. Um, rough, fucking rough. But a lot of people have come down in choppers. Like the last one I can think of was Colin McRae. Like it's mad when you think like. Like Kobe Bryant, okay, it's, it's not the roughest sport in the world, but still, fellas are fl- flogging each other around. He's probably fucking hammering up and down the road for the last 20 years in serious cars. And then a fucking chopper. And then, no, like, what goes through my head is, it's not like a car crash, where you just, it's something come out of nowhere, boom, you're gone. You know what I mean? Pipe comes off the back of a truck, boom, gone. You don't get to see it. But a fucking chopper crash, man. You could be crashing for fucking five minutes. You know what I mean? Oh, the harrowing shit that would be. Ah, oh, here. Do you know, you could be actually just f- gone into a mad spin. Fuck. Open the door and I'd get out to fuck. Rough. Fucking rough. Apparently there was nine people on the chopper. Like, was that overloaded, I wonder? Fucking hell tonight. Um, Happier fucking, happier notions. Oh, yeah. So Geddes comes down the other day and he'll eat in, right? He will. He's self, self. I would too. I would. I would. I'd fucking eat in. So I'm inside and... And this has been confirmed by David Riley, a uh, previous podcast guest. He is star of the Facts Channel. And I'm in Aldi or Lidl. I don't know which one of them I'm in. They're all the fucking one, right? And I'm holding up these... I get to this corner and I'm looking, oh, what the fuck are them things? And it's kind of where all the weird uh, schnitzel flouten is fridge, you know? 
Oh, have you tried our Budenhead? No, I haven't. What is it? Oh, it's fermented eyeballs. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I'll take two of those, so. Great. Oh, have you not tried the Fnatten Fnatten? It's like these nationalities, whoever the fuck they are. Mostly German. It's like, lads, did you ever think for two seconds of at least, if you're if you're going to process this meat into the shape of something, would you not make it look like a dog shit? An actual dog. The amount of their stuff that actually looks like fucking dogs shit it out of them. Put some sort of a fucking shape to it. I mean, we went mad years ago. Do you remember when we put, with the with the giant luncheon roll meat that you get at the deli counter, like in Super Value, they, zoom, zoom, they slide it off. Do you remember one, there was, there was one with a fucking teddy bear's face inside it. That's just straight up weird. You know, you didn't have to go that far. But So I'm looking, right, in this corner, by it. There's these sausages, little, and they look like gourmet setup. Like, so I'm kind of looking, I pick it one up, and it was like, did I just fucking read what I think I just read? I said, bacon and cabbage sausages. Oh, okay. oh, right. And I put this up on Instagram. I still even looked back at myself and went, I, what? There was spice bag flavored uh, sausages. There was chip shop curry sh- uh, flavored. And there was something else, right? I can't remember. But the ones I spotted was chocolate and honeycomb sausages. They look like regular sausages. But they're, they're made by this fella. Barrage. Good Lord. I'm a fucking, I'm so fucking unprofessional. Yawning into the microphone. But I made by this guy, Barry John, right? Shout out to Barry John, or John Barry, whichever the fuck. I'm saying it probably wrong. Shout out to that bloke. So get us anyway, lands on. I says, I'm after making sausages. He says, all right, I'm good with that. I said, but one particular type of sausage. I made regular ones in case he hated them, right? In case I fucking hated them. But there's a dog always there for that. But I said, hold on. I'm after making these other ones. He goes, go on, you look. Because... He knew. He just knew. He says, "There's something weird about this." I says, "There is." This man knows his sausages. I said, "They have chocolate and honeycomb in them." And most people would back up and go, "Yeah, I'm going to give that a miss." Not our fucking Kali G, but Kali G just turned around and went, "Fucking let's have it." <laughs> and we sat down there like two connoisseurs, just looking at each other, like, hmm, hmm. <laughs> Like frowning our forest like two wankers who were like testing wine, you know, but we lived in south of France. Hmm. It turns out I couldn't taste any fucking chocolate off it. I thought it was maybe, I don't know, my, you know, touch of the cold still going, but he couldn't either. But here's the flip side. I wasn't upset because it was a fucking cracking saucy. So chocolate me up with some fucking honeycomb in my sausages if that's what makes it didn't taste up anything in the way of what you imagine chocolate and honeycomb inside now I do now need to go and try all the other ones so if you're listening or if you have a contact to Barry John's or John Barry's whichever they are I will give them several shouts out if they want to send me a fucking little package a package of their, their finest sample sausages because I want to try them all fucking hell I mean that, those ones are uh, it was actually just a banging really good sausage so that'll be tomorrow morning's fry fucking hell they were actually really... Give them a go. I know they sound weird as shit. But give them a go. Like, that takes some warped... He's in Cavan, apparently. He's been doing this for years. He raises the pigs specifically for his own sausage production. And this is all from Davey Riley. He just messaged me. in From Mexico City, of course. Because he's sending me pictures. Apparently, Caveman... Defender the Caveman is huge. It sold out its first six months. Opened up there. Sold out everywhere. First six months. I don't know how. But um, it fucking did. So, but he was sending me pictures. The next thing I put this up, he went, oh, that guy's from Cavan. He raises those pigs for sausage production. At what stage, though, do you hit going, all right, lads, I have a fucking enough of these. R- hey, hey, I have enough of these fucking regular sausages. They are fucking odious. Tell me this. I tell me them all. What would any say if I turned around? And I put cabbage in one. You fucking what? Cabbage. I, oh, don't. I Look, I was talking with Maureen last night. We think cabbage and bacon in a sausage that's made of bacon. What do you think? I, I, I like it. Okay. All right. If you're with me on that one, hold on to your britches, damn it. Because here we go. What do you think? Chip shop curry. In a sausage. I like it. I fucking... Oh, I like it. Dermot, you may want to fucking sit down and pull up your trousers. Spice bag. Sausages. Oh no. 
Now you're going too far. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm only getting fucking started. Damn it. What do you think of chocolate and honeycomb inside in the fucking sausage? Uh, I, I, I'm quitting, Barry. I, I can't, I can't, I can't be any part of this. I can't be any part of this, man. You're fucking, this is unholy. This goes against God. I am God. Barry, God, John, the sausage maker. <coughs> I want to meet the man. I want to meet the man. I want to meet the man that has the fucking balls to do that. To sausages. Huh? What kind of a fucking absolute maverick went and did that to sausages? Fucking get that man in some presidency fucking clothes. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. Like, I'm, I'm gonna, I need to get the fuck out of here and go to bed, right? But uh, I say that, but there's bottles to be made. I'm pretty sure there's bottles. There always seems to be bottles to be made. But anyway. So I'm there last night and I pulled in at uh, Paul's Town, which is in Kil- County Kilkenny. Another piece of shit fucking apple green, right? Where they treat you like you're fuck. Who the- what the fuck are you doing turning up here? That's ba- the way they treat you. And I'm not being... The last three times, out of four times, all four times that these different apple greens have been rude. Three of the times... And I can't kind of blame them. They're, they're Asian lads. like, And they're going, I don't want to fucking be... The fuck, I'm, I don't want to be in this country, man. I'm just only here because it's shit where I, I'm from, you know. Fair enough. All right, grand. So I'm getting coffee, right? And I hand through the, what you call it, the, my own cup. Not because I'm Mr. fucking Greta Thunberg. But I don't need a whole fucking car full of cups. So you bring your own one. He looked at me like, what the fuck did you bring that for? I'm like, wait. Can you put a fucking Americano on that? Really? Do I leave space for milk and everything? I st- if it's too much fucking trouble, don't. Just put some fucking black coffee in that thing, please. So I'm standing there and he fucks off in a hump and a grum- grumbling to himself. And his f- discovery pulls in behind me, right? I'm looking around. I just It sounds rough, right? The Jeep sounds rough. There's a woman in the front with a fag sticking out of her mouth. And it's rare you see that anymore. Like You know what I mean? Fag sticking out of her mouth. But... A- kind of double looking and she's looking over to the side and she's kind of talking back over her shoulder with this fag lit fag hanging out of her mouth and there's a baby seat in the front right on the front seat pointing forward right and there's a tiny baby in it I can see all this right they're pulling up right behind me and I'm guessing and you know they're going to go what the fuck you're smoking you got a baby on the front seat pointing the forward way I'm uh, now this, I know this has come sounds probably starting to sound pretty fucking preachy from a fella who only just learned about something about children, right? But even I know you don't smoke a fucking fag into their face, right? Inside the car. So there's two kids in the fucking back, right? Because there's seats in the back as well. Because it's, you know, it's a crew cab. And out gets this bloke who's seemingly your partner of some sort. He's definitely steaming, right? And he's got a fag hanging out of his mouth as well, lit. And he's standing there, he's just fucking staggering around the fucking forecourt. She struggles to get out of the front front seat, and the kids are screaming for something, right? And she's like, "Would you fucking sit back down?" And she puts out two crutches first. She's got a broken fucking leg. Her leg's in a fucking cat. It's like if you wrote this, nobody would think. Like he looked like he'd been on the weekend, you know, a weekend that was written by fucking Ben Stiller or something. What the fuck is going on? And she gets out and she's just barking back at the children. She shouts at your man. Your man's like. Fucking hey, hey, what fags do you want? That fucking cell cuts is your man. He's wandering around with a lit fag. He's now staggering over near the fucking pumps. Your one's still fucking spit. Next, she spat out the fag because she didn't have the hands free anymore because they're in to, gone into the crutches. And the baby's just sitting in the fucking front. Like, kids are screaming their fucking head off. I waited, watched the whole fucking thing on uh, just to see what anything more involved. And you know what was mad? <clears throat> your man dead eyed me more that like with as much dead like this will tell you how little was going on with this like I probably walked away and was looking at these with my mouth hung out, hanging open but the guy inside the fucking hatch with the fucking deadness he showed me he had the exact same deadness for this situation like if you saw this unfolding like the very fact that she looked a bit drunk as well albeit she was on crutches and she had a fucking cast but your man was definitely langers and it was definitely two kids in the back like this was like these cunts were rocking around in 1962 in their head. Like, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to be. Like again, I'm no doctor. I have families, family, 
fucking siblings who are doctors. I should really ask them. But I'm pretty sure fag smoke is not good for a newborn or anybody, let alone a newborn and two kids maybe under the age of five sitting in the back. And they shit fucking around. They're roaring at each other like savages. Next thing, bang, bang, all the doors close. Oh, the V6 goes fucking hard across the forecourt into force. Boom, out the fucking gap with them. And this is all like about half one this morning. So what the fuck? It was like they were on the run from something. Do you know what I mean? Strange. Anybody knows those people because they sound, you know, they definitely sound like they were on the fucking run. I said, after that, maybe I should have fucking... I didn't, what do you, how, how do you even describe that to somebody on the guards? Because you don't ring 999 for that. You just ring the local guard station. You don't go, 999, I've got something that I don't know anything about to tell you. Because they go, would you ever fuck off? Do you know, because it just sounds like I'm being an Aussie bastard. But I'd be fairly handy and perceptive with that kind of shit. And it was definitely something a head or a foot. Fucking smoking fags into kids' faces. I'm pretty sure that's not a good thing. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. Um, I'll have a podcast out for you, a buckshot out for you on Monday morning. Uh, once again, thank you so much to everybody who contributed to the idonate.ie. If you want to have a look for idonate.ie, and just type in Natasha O'Mahony. I will put the link in the show notes just in case. Sometimes they don't work when it goes onto certain platforms, like um, it goes onto CastBox. They will only allow one link to be in the show notes. The other ones, they're cool. idonate.ie is the thing. It'd be great if you slung it a couple of... Uh, once again, to the couple of listeners, you know who you are, and you gave on one in particular, unbelievably generous. Um, but again, it is for a good cause. So thank you very, very much. The Patreon page is there. At this stage, I'm not I'm not saying what... Look, you know it goes towards the show. But what it is now, it is a whole new platform where only the Ramble Pods are going to live after number 80. That's where they're going. For everything else, hit me up. Keep up them all fucking uh, screen grabs and all the rest. Of them. I better find out what gig I'm doing on Saturday night. Oh, Jesus. Right. Go on away. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. God bless, lads and minders. 